Astrogenia Astronomy. My name's Jonathan. And tonight I'm gonna image one of the coolest deep sky objects I think there is in a night sky, Thor's Helmet Nebula in the constellation Canis Major. And it's a really small target, probably better suited for uh, focal lengths of around a thousand millimeters. But my Zenith Star 81 telescope is 450 millimeters paired with the ASI 183 MC Pro astronomy camera that gives me a two times crop factor. So I should still be able to get pretty close and capture a lot of those cool details. And it's a, one of those targets that really look exactly like the name says. Um, so it's pretty cool. Um, I did image this last year uh, and I framed it for my dad for his birthday. He's a big comic book nerd. Hopefully I can add this data to uh, what I gathered last year to get an even better and more impressive photograph. This nebula is about 1500 light years away. It is made up mainly of hydrogen alpha and oxygen three so a target like this is another perfect target for the uh, Optolong L Extreme Duo Narrowband filter and I'll really be able to isolate that hydrogen and oxygen and really capture a cool image so I got everything already polar aligned from last night um, all I gotta do is basically turn everything on and get slewed to the target so Stick around guys, it should be a pretty interesting night of imaging Thor's helmet. I'm excited. Plus. Let's go ahead and just go here to Rigel. Rigel's a nice bright star. So I use the bot knob mass to help focus the telescope and I tell the mount to locate and center Thor's helmet. Then I start my auto guide scope to help with any drifting during my long exposures. I use the auto run feature on my ASI Air to manage and run my image session. I set it to take 65 minute exposures and begin my second night imaging NGC 2359. I can't help but think of my dad tonight. He used to take me camping when I was a kid and I remember looking up and seeing all the stars and realizing how small we are. These small moments that make me remember where I came from and how I got to where I am are the reasons that I will continue to explore and find my truth. This is why I love astrophotography. I'm picking up a pretty strong signal. I am getting a little bit of star trails. We're just gonna let this keep rolling. Um, I'm gonna check it here in a minute to do the meridian flip and go ahead and lay down for a couple hours. And it's a funny time of the year right now. You don't really have a whole lot of choices for targets um, unless you're like wanting to shoot a galaxy and all the winter constellations are starting to go away. So I'm done imaging this tonight at about 1.30, 2 o'clock. It will be the end of my session tonight. So when I get everything automated kind of like this, I just, uh, stick with one target i'll shoot that multiple nights that way i don't get targets backed up on my computer before i could even get the first data set processed i would already have a whole nother set so i just kind of stopped doing that and it's made my life a lot easier and i'm able to kind of enjoy the hobby a little better and i mean the sky's not going anywhere and i don't want to kind of burn myself out too bad so we'll come back here in a bit and see what's up and make sure everything's running smooth when your telescope gets to a certain point, you can see where it's angled here. It's moving to the right. So if I just continue to let it move to the right, my telescope would bump into the tripod there. So it performs this automatic meridian flip for me. I don't have to worry about it. And it's always good practice to come out here whenever it's doing this, just to make sure none of the cords get hung up. My cable management could definitely be better. It's good. Oh. 
I love nights when the moon just lights up everything and it's just clear. It's really nice out tonight. It's not too cold. So it's about 40 degrees or so. Hopefully we can get make it all the way to 60 and yeah. We'll get a cool image with uh, about nine hour exposure. <laughs>